Hi, this is Park Madden with The Weather Store in Sandwich, Massachusetts. Uh, today I'd like to share with you some advice and safety tips about transporting a mercury barometer. Now in The Weather Store, I actually sell a couple different types of barometers. There are the aneroid barometers like this, the mercury barometers like that, and also digital barometers. Now, why does a mercury barometer need more care than an aneroid barometer? Well, let me explain. So an aneroid barometer like this, or a digital barometer, is a mechanical piece. It doesn't contain any mercury. There are no fluids in it, and I can hold it like this and use it and demonstrate and wave my hands with it, and it's going to be fine. I can ship this, I can turn it upside down, and it's going to be fine. It uses a uh, aneroid chamber and springs and gears and levers to measure air pressure. Now, a mercury barometer <clears throat> is actually an older technology and this is going to be a liquid metal and I'm picking up a barometer here that contains mercury and if you look carefully in there you're going to see a tube in here that's and the mercury is pumping up and down because I'm moving it around. Now you can also see that I'm not really uh, handling it or waving it around that much. I'm actually making slow steady movements and yet it's uh, spinning around um, pumping up and down I'm sorry and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you, is I'm going to tilt it onto its side like this. And actually, as I tilt it onto the side, you might be able to hear it. Okay, that little clicking noise, that is actually the top of the mercury column hitting the glass tube. Now, this is about 32 inches in length, and at the bottom, there's an open end on it. Open meaning that if I were to take this and lay it flat or, or even further, mercury could spill or a bubble could work its way up into the column. Both are bad situations. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep our mercury barometer, ideally it's hanging on the wall, or when we're transporting we're holding it at an angle. Now the reason for the angle works is because mercury column needs about 30 inches for it to accurately measure the air pressure given a little space at the top for fluctuations in pressure. If we tilt it, we're actually shortening that height and it's forcing that column up to the top. When it's at the top, it's less likely to move. Additionally, it draws more mercury into the bottom, meaning that there's more of a gap uh, between the top of the mercury down here and the open end, which means it's got more room in case something were to jostle or spill. Now I'm going to show you this on a wheel barometer so we're going to see this a little bit differently. And you might notice as I'm handling this, I'm going very smoothly and finding a good spot for it to lay safely in a corner. So now I'm going to pick up a wheel barometer. <clears throat> and as you can see, slow steady movement. I'm going to tilt it onto its side and we're going to open up this case. And in here, you're going to see a full column of mercury. And at the top, as I'm holding this up and down, you should be able to see that pumping up and down. Now, if I lay it like this, you hear that click? That means it went all the way to the top. Additionally, the bottom end, where the mercury comes around the bottom and opens up, that is open at the top. And because it's on angle, it's drawn down as far as possible. So, we're going to keep this at a 45 degree angle. It's the best way to transport it. Additionally, you can, on that open end right there, put a little cork in there. And that might help slow down that pumping motion because it's restricting air from going in and also would catch any mercury that might spill. So, we're now going to hang this back up, close that door up. And again, the safest place for barometer is hanging on the wall like this in one place. You know, most barometers probably sit on a wall for years, maybe decades at a time, and they never move, and that's the best place for them. However, there are times that we need to move a barometer. Maybe we're moving or uh, changing location, redecorating. Maybe you're selling one or you're buying one. These are all instances when a barometer needs to move. So what I've talked about is really just moving a barometer, just moving it from point A to point B a short distance. Now, if you have to go a longer distance, there's a couple other things I want to uh, give you some advice about. If you're coming by car, maybe you're bringing a barometer to me or I've sold one and you're taking it away. Uh, again, using the same techniques about 
careful handling. It's almost, uh, by the way, I like to use the analogy of like a steady cam or a glass of water. It's just a very smooth motion, no sudden jerks up and down or side to side. I think of it as like a steady cam. And if you're transporting it by car, a great place to put it would be in the front seat or the back seat. So the bottom end is down the foot well, and then the top end is maybe leaning against the seat. You can further brace it with some pillows uh, and or the seat belt. Additionally, I think a good idea is also to put a plastic around it. A big garbage bag is a good idea just in case you are to go over like a big bump or a sudden turn or God forbid there's an accident, that way it's contained. I've even seen people use little wash basins to uh, put underneath just in case. So those are a couple tips. Uh, beyond that, I think the rest of the tips such as maybe wrapping it in like a soft um, packing material, those can all be applied. Uh, however, really the thing is keeping at an angle and making sure it doesn't spill. Now. Occasionally, people want to buy a barometer or ship me a barometer from a longer distance. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, <clears throat> the major shipping carriers will not accept mercury. It's a hazardous substance. You can understand why it, uh, it's very corrosive. Last thing they want to do is to deal with a spill that's on, let's say, an airplane because mercury and aluminum do not mix very well. So there are big fines and penalties if you do ship. So. You know, let's just uh, not even consider that. The only way to transport a barometer a long distance is to use a courier. Now, that could be a friend. It could be a person that you know that's traveling from point A to point B. We're on Cape Cod, and we've actually shipped barometers out to the West Coast successfully. Um, sometimes people are traveling, and they know they're coming up. Sometimes I'm traveling, and I've been able to make a delivery. Beyond that, there is a company called uship.com, and it's spelled U-S-H-I-P.com, which is essentially a web service that pulls together independent contractors who are transporting a variety of goods all across the country, and they will come and they can pick it up and deliver it. And the reason this works is that I can actually talk to the driver and say, listen, this has to stay at 45 degrees the whole time, no exceptions. And the customer who's receiving it understands it, they take it off the car, and they bring it in and it goes directly and just goes onto a hook like this. So that's um, really the only way to get this across country because not only you know, will these uh, shipping um, uh, companies, FedEx, UPS, Postal not accept it, but it, again, it'd be like trying to ship a glass of water. It's just not gonna work, it's gonna spill. So, um, so really apart from that, if somebody really wants a barometer from me, I can take the mercury out. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna show you how to take the mercury out. That'll be the scope for another video that I do. But then the problem is, is that how do you get the mercury back in? So I can't even ship you the mercury. So you're gonna to have to find a place at your location of somebody, maybe a clock maker. There are a few people scattered around the country that do do this, but they're gonna to have to put mercury back into it and it's not as easy as just pouring it in. There's a whole technique with it. So there are serious drawbacks to shipping a barometer across country as as pointed out so uh, you can do the courier i can take the mercury out but they're not ideal and probably because of that i would say that most of the barometer sales i do are probably within a, a short drive of my store but we have on occasion done some longer ones um, well i hope that helps answer a couple questions about the problems of transporting a mercury barometer. And, you know, we wanna keep these things safe. It's really a, it's a fine instrument. They respond wonderfully to uh, weather changes. They're really one of my favorite instruments that I sell. Uh, however, I also understand that they're not the easiest things to ship. Uh, and certainly if it is uh, spilled or you do get air pockets in there, uh, bubbles in there because of mishandling, the barometer will not work anymore. It just won't respond. It needs to have that, that straight, thick column of solid mercury that's pumping up and down with air pressure. So uh, if you do find yourself in a situation where your barometer is not working, fortunately, you'd be close enough, uh, we'd be happy to help you out with that. So thank you again for watching. Uh, please leave any comments or questions you have uh, down below, or you can always reach out to me directly. I can be found at theweatherstore.com or if you find yourself on Cape Cod, 
We're at 146 Main Street in Sandwich, Massachusetts. Thank you again for watching.